Um, for those of you that don't know me, I am Jim Guy. I am the new product manager for Redline Tools, and we are launching a new product today called our Versa Stop, Vice Stop. And with with us, we have the manufacturer, Rich Amdahl, who is going to go through a quick uh, features and benefits, and then a quick tutorial on it. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Rich. Thank you. All Jim. right. <clears throat> Thanks for uh, coming to the meeting here. Uh, my name is Rich. I've uh, been a machinist since the late 80s, so been around for a while. Worked down in the Twin Cities here pretty much my entire career at a few longer term jobs. One of them was at a machine tool distributor, so I've uh, had the experience, uh, you know, working on your side of the, uh, as an applications engineer, working on your side of the industry, and uh, also, you know, and on the consumer side, obviously, for most of it. So I do have some some cool, unique perspectives there that uh, I can help you with the sales side of it a little bit, uh, having that experience. <clears throat> and, you know, what we'll go over today is we're going to, I'll go over the product specs and then the different applications of it, and then maybe some uh, different sales approaches that could be used for it. So... <clears throat> what we have is it's the Versa Stop, and it's a kit that comes in a box like this. It's a complete kit, and what it is is it's a vice stop. It's a work stop for a vice, and the, the first pattern mounting pattern is for the standard 6-inch vice, and <clears throat> the, uh, there, there'll be other mounting patterns later, but the standard 6-inch you know, curt vice it's in every shop all over the place, so uh, there's plenty of opportunity for this product. It's something that came to be because I had issues with every other option on the market. They all had limitations and uh, different issues that prevented me from doing my job. So there's four key points on this uh, product, and these are the things to remember and, and tell the customers. The very first one, the number one thing, <clears throat> is that this stop rod, if you're familiar with, uh, you know, vice stops and stuff, this, this will bolt on there, and we'll go over that. But this rod is what locates the part. This rod is the highest point of the entire assembly. It actually is above all of the clamping mechanisms, and there's no other work stop out there that has that. They all have to have some sort of adapter or zigzag or some other way of addressing that which means you need other special tools uh, to get that done. So the rod is the high point, and you can also use any diameter in here. You're not locked into a quarter inch. So now that opens up opportunity for different setups because you can go from a sixteenth of an inch to three eighths of an inch. So anywhere in that range from a sixteenth to three eighths will fit in here without changing any parts. <clears throat> the, the clamp for it is simply a jaw mechanism exactly the same as the vise. So there's a solid jaw here and a movable jaw there. And it'll clamp on anything that'll fit in there. So not only can you go different diameters, you can go different shapes. So, uh, you know, triangle hex works perfect because the hex shape is actually fitted to the 120 degree angle cut in the solid jaw so it matches perfectly in there. <clears throat> uh, you can grab square stock because it's just a little vise in there. Uh, anything that fits you can clamp in there. And the fourth key feature is that you can load the, thing, the stop rod straight up and down. So if you have this in your machine with another vise right next to it, you don't have to slide a stop rod all the way out the end and interfere with your other work holding. You can just open it up, lift it straight up, put your other rod in if you need to, <clears throat> and you're, you're back up and going again. So those are the four key things. That the rod is the high point, the range from a sixteenth to three eighths, that any shape that fits in there and it's top loading <clears throat> those four things set it apart from every other option out there and 
they're not all important during every setup and every use of the product, but that one job a month or one job every six months that comes in where you can avoid a 45 minute uh, setup time just because you have to make a special rod to clamp on a part that's thinner than your rod size that you normally have in there, then <clears throat> this one you can just throw anything in there. You don't have to have a fancy round perfect anything. You can throw a screwdriver in there, your Allen wrench, whatever you need to. So setup times just drop drastically on this part of the setup. <clears throat> so those are the four key features of it. Now the there's just four parts to the entire assembly not counting the screws and stuff. The <clears throat> the main bracket there's a left and a right. So one's for this side, one's for the other side. The the entire work stop assembly is also always square to the vise. So it becomes very predictable <clears throat> for your setup. So you just naturally know where your stop rod is going to be and it will go right where you want it to be right in in one shot like there's no double adjusting so if you have seen the round bar versions with the square clamps <clears throat> you're rotating that uh, cylinder in there <clears throat> and clamping it it's very difficult to predict where that thing is going to be at all the different angles happening at the same time. This is always square because this bracket has a locating surface here that also locates on the back of the vise where your vise jaw would mount. So there's all vices that can carry an outboard vise jaw <clears throat> will have that locating step. You locate the stop on that step. So we'll get that on there. So it's it's important that you get it square. I'm just going to slide that over. <clears throat> it's important that you get it square on there. Get that. All righty. Just like any other part of the machinist job, make sure it's clean, make sure it's good. So once that's square, <clears throat> Now the entire assembly here is always square and predictable to your work. And then it, once you've mounted it, it comes with the wrench and everything here is made in USA, including the material source, the wrench is the Bondus high quality plated wrench. <clears throat> but then it's just one adjustment here and then one for the rod. Let's put this one in there. <clears throat> so two adjustments get you exactly where you need to be and typically you get your your rod length set and then <clears throat> the other two axes are both adjusted with one clamping screw that just you know that uh, does not affect when you tighten this it doesn't move the location of this like like a clamp that would be a pinch bolt scenario where <clears throat> you're tightening down on something. When you tighten that, there's the potential for rotation a little bit. And sometimes that 10 thousandths of rotation is gonna make the difference between your uh, cutter hitting the work stop or not. <clears throat> so it's super easy to get this right where you want for cutter clearance. The, the trick I like is, crack that, I want it to be as tall as I can. I can just put something flat across the jaws, loosen this, hold the top of the rod against the bottom of my reference here, and it's exactly flush with the top of the vise jaws. So if you've set it up for all your tools to not cut into the vise jaws, it's also not gonna cut into the rod or any part of the work stop because it's all below the top of the rod there. <clears throat> as long as you have quarter inch and larger rods because you can put in the 16th inch and then it's going to be down below the top. So a quarter inch, which is the standard that it ships with, quarter inch and larger will be the high point there. <clears throat> and then you've 
because you've got it at the top of the jaws, it's maximum purchase on the, uh, the, on the material there. So you're not uh, missing the edge. So if there's a bigger chamfer on one, it's still going to catch it. <clears throat> uh, so that, that uh, when I mentioned the, the pinch bolt scenario, that's one thing that's been eliminated on this because every time, if you've used those, every time you tighten them, you're kind of, you're flexing that material and you've got to overcome that strength and your, your bolts are wearing. Everything is fatiguing every time because you're, you're stretching, you're flexing that material. Nothing here is designed to be forced to flex like that in order to function. So it's not going to ever get compressed and stay there like a pinch bolt can get compressed. And now you've got the screwdriver in there prying it open to get, just to get your rod in or out or a threaded one's got bad threads and so super easy super quick to set up on this if you need to switch to a different size rod it's just one turn of the wrench and it can come straight up and out of there then you can switch over to a larger rod or a smaller one or a different shape you just need to make sure that it's seated into the little V on the backs on the like on the solid jaw what would be considered the, the solid jaw portion of the clamp <clears throat> I'm not sure if the detail if does everyone have do they have one of these no, available in front of them okay <clears throat> so a demo unit okay just as soon as this presentation is over okay just so then uh, it just it'll be difficult to see but on the solid jaw part back here that doesn't move, that has a 120 degree V cut into this face of it. And that's what these rods are sitting into to keep it from being able to get like pried up and down there. And then the movable jaw just has a flat surface on it. So with a V and a flat, you've got your three points of contact uh, and that's what allows you to put any size, any shape in there without changing any parts. <clears throat> so as far as a, uh, like a sales perspective, this is a, you know, it's a low cost, but high value item that can like immediately impact the workflow in the shop. If, if they're using vices, doing vice work, you know, if they're using this type of product, I promise you this is going to speed up their setups because <clears throat> it is just so much quicker and simpler to adjust that you're not wrestling with hidden fasteners and unpredictable angles and having to move and readjust and move it back. There's a lot of different uh, work stop styles out there and some of them you have to swing them up and make one adjustment, then swing it down and check it and go, nope, not, and you have to move it multiple times. And if you're adding even five minutes to every setup, this thing would pay for itself in four days if you're just, just doing a handful of setups a day. So you could walk into a customer with this, with this kit, <clears throat> and just kind of give them the four high points, the four key features, and uh, you know, get it in the hands of the machinists, and uh, maybe ask what they're using. Uh, see what kind of work stops they have, and then you know, you'll have to read it on each you know customer basis, obviously. But uh, try and make a note of like, ah, that one's milled into there. Like, ah, did you you know wreck a face mill or an end mill when you when you cut into the bolt on that fast on that clamp there? And you go like, oh, see, now with the high point, that would never be an issue here. <clears throat> and then uh, if you, I think if, and I don't know if you've got it planned or not, but if you left a kit with a customer said, hey, try it for a week, I'll come back. If, you know, if, it, if it's not nice, if you don't like it, eh, we'll take it back. And then uh, no harm. But pretty sure if they put it in a machine, like you're, you're not getting it back. They will buy that thing. There, you know, it's a, it's a pretty big step up from everything else that exists on the market right now. 
and it really speeds up the, the setups to your quicker changeover and <clears throat> reduces the, the chance of milling into the work stop, damaging the cutter and, and your work stop. So that, uh, that versatility of it is, uh, is just is key uh, compared to anything else out there. So just getting it in front of machinist is, that's the, that's almost all you have to do. It should sell itself. <laughs> so right now, this bracket is designed for a six inch vise. It would be the, the mounting pattern. It doesn't work on a four inch vise directly. It would just need a different bracket, which is in development. And so is the eight inch vise. The eight inch vise was the kind of the most popular request at IMTS, I would say. And then uh, orange vise with the dove block, I think it is, or no, carve smart, the carve smart uh, on the orange vise, uh, that mount is also in process. But this is only really going to fit because of the bolt spacing uh, and the mounting surface. Right now it's not going to fit easily on a four inch, but machinists are crafty and this can be, there's a lot of ways you can just use this unconventionally. The very first shop I put this in, they put it on their CMM and used it uh, multiple different ways on their CMM. Uh, it could be used in a laser marking application, all kinds of different applications. But you could clamp this bracket to the table. You could clamp it to a one, two, three block that's clamped to the table and then use it on your four inch vise. So it doesn't fit on there, but there's ways to get crafty, just like machinists have had to do, you know, their whole career so far. So, but that it's coming out, just not yet. Oh, yep. The, all of the parts are aluminum. It's 6061. There was a lot of testing and development on multiple materials and <clears throat> 6061 was selected. Uh, it is very rigid. So it's all aluminum with stainless steel fasteners. And even the stainless steel fasteners are USA sourced. So they're the military spec stainless steel fasteners. Uh, otherwise it is all aluminum and that's uh, part of the thickness involved there. <clears throat> and it's been thoroughly tested. Uh, I've got four years on mine. So they're, they're very robust and uh, the repeatability obviously depends on how big the gorilla is that's loading the vise, right? But <clears throat> within, with a five pound variation in force on this, you're only gonna see about seven tenths of uh, variation on loading location. And five pounds of loading force is pretty extreme. That's pretty, pretty hefty for a value of someone pushing force against it and typically you're just getting it up to it and then more in a relaxed state or a static position. Both fasteners for the adjustments are quarter 20 so they're super standard you know hardware that's found in every shop super easy to get if you don't have it you know everything was designed to be modular and quick and easy to to replace so there's all the replacement parts are available uh, everything is right now easy to get. <laughs> the bolts can be sometimes a challenge. But. So in the instructions they've got, so this comes, this ships with the kit. And uh, at the top, the top half here shows all of the parts with the part numbers and then uh, instructions for mounting and the do's and don'ts, just the, the, you know, your standard instructions. But at the same time, every part is laser marked with the part number. So there's a QR code that they can quick scan to get to your website to, to get these, uh, to get right to the, you know, the product info. And then every individual part uh, of the aluminum parts, not the, the bolts aren't marked, but the, uh, each individual parts are laser marked with the part number. So it's super easy for them to get replacement parts. So the, 
the way that these are provided now, <clears throat> there is one kit for one side of the vise, and then you have the option of adding this here pocket would be, uh, that'd be that would be empty, and then you can add just the other bracket so that you have two brackets and one arm, and then you have to move your arm from one side to the other, or you just buy a complete kit here and a complete kit there, and that, that's how you get uh, for both sides. So the, there's the option of two brackets and one arm, or two complete kits. And the brackets are just sold separately in addition to the kits. So that's how you would, uh, or that, that's how they're, how they're being sold. Yeah, I just wanted to jump in. <clears throat> Everything is online already. It's ready to go. So orders, uh, customers can see it on the online website. Uh, the kit itself is $160. And then just the bracket itself, if you're looking for just this to get to the left side and you have a right side kit, uh, that's $50. Yep, both left and right <clears throat> as a kit are in stock as well. There's... Two more little, uh, two things I need to also show you, I just remembered. <clears throat> Real quick here, get this bracket on there. So two more uh, very handy things, and I've, when you just, something you said just reminded me of that if you're not machining it. So I've had parts where it's, it sticks out both sides of the vise, it's longer, but I need to locate it and then machine both ends complete. Well, because this thing is always square and always predictable, on where it's going to be, <clears throat> it works excellent. I, I do this with it regularly, where you have, let's get it snapped in. <clears throat> so you have it on there where you need it, you locate your part, then you swing it out of the way, do your machining, and then switch your parts. You just swing it back again, and it's going to be in the same spot again. So it'll, you can move it out of the way to do your machining and come back to that same X location for the job it, it's doing is locating that direction. It's going to go back to that same spot again. Another scenario is what if you have a part wider, like, you know, the inside of this is the farthest out you can go with the stop rod. What if you have a part wider than this? Right now, they're not for sale. They will be. I have to get them into production, but I have these little candy cane hooks that transfer that loading edge further out. <clears throat> so then you just need longer candy canes and you can get You'll be able wider to parts. Below your, your part surface. Yep, so you can still locate wider. Right now, and I've, I've even used, you can use a bolt head for that if you needed to. You can clamp the bolt in there and use the, the lip on there. You can use Allen wrenches. I've used, you can put an Allen wrench in there and get wide parts on there. <clears throat> so there's, uh, you know, machinists are good at being crafty, but those are two things where you can machine the end of the part where the stop is just by moving it out of the way. So that's another, another good use there.